All right, you guys. Now listen here. As the proprietor of this joint, I'd like to welcome yous and thank yous for coming. Yous might already guess that it was me what sent you the invites to this little meeting. If yous has got the drinks and other refreshments yous is gonna need, I'll begin. <clears throat> yous is probably wondering why I called yous here like this. As yous knows, on Thursday of this week, Hal Coppone disappeared under suspicious circumstances, and he ain't been heard from since. Now, there ain't hardly nobody in Chicago who don't know that on Wednesday, Hal Coppone got out of prison in Philly, and with some of his boys caught the 8 o'clock train, which gets into Chicago at 5 past 9 the next morning. As White had gotten round that Hal was on the train, there was a lot of people at the station, including some cops, reporters, and a few G-men. But Hal don't even stop to talk and gets right in the McFarlane armored limousine that was waiting at the curb for him. If you was there at the station, you maybe noticed that only Hal got in the McFarlane. And the rest of his boys climbed in one of the seven-passenger Lincoln touring cars that was also waiting there. And yous wouldn't have missed the fact that when the McFarlane pulled away, it was followed by the Lincolns and several carloads of cops and revenuers. Now, everybody knows that Hal Coppone's headquarters in Chicago is at the Lexington Hotel. And except for a wrong turn down a blind alley took by Benny the Whale Martyr, Hal Coppone's driver, uh, the cars, drove directly to the hotel from the station. And I knows that yous all is heard that just as the McFarlane was driving up to the Luxington Hotel, it was blown to pieces by a bomb thrown in the driver's window, which was rolled down at the time. At first, of course, it was assumed that Hal Coppone and his driver was burned up in the car, which was totally destroyed. As yous has heard since, though, there was only one body found, and that was Benny the Wheels. Hal Coppone's body wasn't even in the car, and he ain't been seen nowhere by nobody since, even though the police is conducting a citywide search. Now, it ain't gonna come as no surprise to you as when I says that Hal Coppone has a lot of enemies in Chicago, and there was also plenty of guys that stood to make a profit by Coppone going up in smoke, if you'll excuse the expression. <laughs> And I'm sure yous will agree that even the feds wouldn't have cried too hard to see their arch enemy Hal Coppone blasted the pieces right in front of his headquarters. But when this very thing happens, and then they find that Hal Coppone wasn't even in the car, though they all sees him when he gets in at the station, well, the consternation what resulted was considerable. I ain't told yous nothing yous ain't already heard. But now I'm getting to the point of the story and the reason that I call you here tonight. Scarcely two hours ago, at about five o'clock, I heard from what you might call a contact inside Coppone's headquarters that they has found Hal Coppone, but that the circumstances of where they's found him ain't hardly possible to believe. I'm going to relate the facts as they was told to me. First... As yous knows, the Lexington Hotel is a virtual fortress. And at all times, armed men stands watch at each of the entrances and from windows overlooking the streets. Because enemy gangs has attacked the building from time to time, the windows on the lower stories is covered with steel louvers and the garage door is covered with steel plate. Trucks and cars on cop owns business enters the garage only after giving the proper signal and being admitted, right? Second, deep on the ground beneath the hotel, Coppone built a concrete vault what is guarded 24 hours a day by specially trustworthy members of his gang. The vault has a double wall steel door with a bank type combination lock and only Coppone's most trusted lieutenants knows the combination. Inside the vault, along with vast quantities of imported hooch and guns and ammo, is another even stronger vault, a safe. And only two guys knows the combination to the lock. First, there's Hal Capone himself. Second, there's Sonny Greasy Fingers Salamo, the gang's treasurer. Third, yous has all heard that Hal Capone amassed a considerable fortune in cash money. 
It's a fact that most of this fortune was kept in a safe inside the vault and that only Carpone or Sonny Greasy Fingers Salamo could get at it. Nobody knows for sure how much the fortune amounts to, but there's them that says it's 30, maybe 40 million bucks. Fort. Last week, Sonny Greasy Finger Salamo goes to New York to see his mother. And he only gets back today after hearing that Carpone is missing. Now, it seems that in the week since he's been gone, the gang run out of cash. And so this afternoon, Greasy Fingers goes down to the vault to get some cash for payoffs and things. Accompanied by Johnny the Enforcer, Rico, and Joey the Rattlesnake Rotella, he opens the main vault door and goes inside. Then he opens the safe door. Inside that, instead of finding the fortune... They find how Capone's body riddled with machine gun bullets and lying in a pool of his own blood. The fortune is missing. It goes without saying that how Capone's vault is so closely guarded that nobody could sneak inside, even if they was to know the secret combination. Now, I done some figuring. And if 30, 40 million bucks in 50s and hundreds was piled up in stacks three feet high, the stack would be three feet across and six foot long. Sneaking that much money out past armed guards just ain't possible, even granting that sneaking past the guards in the first place is possible, which it ain't. Now, yous also ought to know that just before Sonny Greasy Finger Salamo went to New York to see his mother, he and Johnny the Enforcer Rico went down to the vault, and the fortune was all there at that time. Also, yous probably knows that Hal Capone's built a whole bunch of underground tunnels connecting the Luxington Hotel with his brothels and speakeasies in the area. But it's a fact that yous can't get from these tunnels into the basement where the vault is without going through the garage first and then past the guards. Now, Capone's gang has decided that it was Sonny Greasy Finger Salamo done it. Me? I don't think Greasy Fingers done it at all. I thinks it was one or more of yous. I've been watching things and listening to things, and I've got some ideas of my own about how yous might have done it. So, here's the pitch. Either you cuts me in for an equal share of the loot, or I turns you over to the boys at the Luxington. Now, it's possible that all of yous wasn't in on this, and that I'm accusing an innocent person, but that's the breaks. Uh, now, don't get no wise ideas. I got a few of my friends with guns, watching the door, and, of course, Capone's boys is only across the way, so there ain't no use in running for it. It just sits here nice and quiet. Me and the girls will keep the food and the booze coming and just talks things out. I'll leave yous alone for a few hours, and if by then yous has decided amongst yous who's got the loot and where it's at, then we can get down to business. But if at the end of that time, say midnight, yous ain't prepared to do a deal... <laughs> Then I'll call Johnny the Enforcer Rico and Joy the Rattlesnake Rotella and see what they thinks of all this. So there, who needs another shot of hooch? 